Hello everybody, I'm Chris and welcome to my channel. I want to wind down the year 2022 doing some fun videos. And the first one is a result of a survey I did over on Instagram starting about two weeks ago. I asked everybody if they would tell me what their top favorite fragrances were and their least favorite fragrances. And I collected data over two weeks and I got well over a thousand responses and I have the results sitting in front of me today. The first video I'm gonna do the top 10, Instagram decides the 10 best fragrances. That will be followed by Instagram decides the 10 worst fragrances, unisex men and female alike. Before we dive into the results, it is important to gain a little bit of perspective as to what my demographics are. I'm gonna put the demographics of my followers up on the screen. I have no idea what it is but I know there's a way to find it. My followers are overwhelmingly female and the age bracket will be divided up as you see on the screen. So when I tell you about these results, you'll put that in perspective. I also find that people on Instagram in general or the ones that interact with my site tend to be very much into fragrances, particularly niche fragrances. So people on Instagram, for the most part, really into their fragrances. So a lot of what is gonna show up on these lists are going to be from niche houses. It took me a long time to tally the results, but I thought it would be fun to do a top 10. So we're gonna start from 10 and go all the way up to one. And I'm gonna do it by a little mystery reveal, whereas it's gonna be a little bit interactive. I'm going to tell you the notes and see if you can guess what the fragrance is. For a little spoiler alert, it may not come as a surprise that some of the fragrances on the best list are also some of the fragrances on the worst list. And with that, let's just get started. Surprisingly, I have almost all of the fragrances in the top 10 list except for two, including number 10. And in the number 10 spot, we have a fragrance by Valentino. The top notes are black currant, pink pepper, bergamot, mid notes are jasmine, jasmine tea, and the base is bourbon, vanilla, cashmere, and guyac wood. And in the number 10 spot is, drum roll please, Valentino Donna Born in Roma, one I don't have but I remember smelling it in a magazine and really liking it. So I think it is very well liked. And so it made the number 10 spot. In the number nine position is a fragrance I own and the notes are as follows. Top notes, fruity notes, peach, lychee, sage, tangerine, rosemary, artemisia, geranium, and bitter orange middle notes. Ylang, sandalwood, mint, magnolia, rose, lily, and the base notes are vanilla, coconut musk, and oak moss. Can anyone take a guess what this fragrance is? It is Ylang and Gold by M. Mikalif. I, oh my gosh, I absolutely adore this fragrance. To me, this is a beautiful floral gourmand. The fruity notes are very prominent, particularly the peach. It has lychee in here. Basically, I get mainly peach, peach, I get a really lovely Ylang, I get a really pretty vanilla and coconut, and the Ylang and the vanilla and the coconut kind of come off as like a banana pudding kind of a thing. It is absolutely beautiful. I tend to wear this more in the spring and the summer, although this is definitely a year-round fragrance, and as I'm sitting here right now sniffing it and it just smells absolutely delicious, I'm asking myself, why am I not wearing this right now? I actually had to, I got it out of storage because this is, to me, this is one of my favorite spring and summer fragrances, but it is so spectacular and it has such a beautiful vanilla warmth to it that it would be beautiful in the wintertime, particularly if you live somewhere where it's not freezing cold and snowing because I'm never gonna wear something like this when it's snowing. It, this kind of reads tropical paradise to me. So one of my favorite fragrances in the number nine spot, Ylang in Gold. In the number nine spot is the only other fragrance I do not own. I used to own it, I actually thought it was quite pretty, but the reason I decluttered it is I liked the bottle better than the fragrance itself, and, and I really preferred a few of the flankers over it. So it got decluttered even though it is a beautiful perfume. So the top notes are, see if you can guess it, ginger blood orange, that's gonna give it away right there. Middle notes are tuberose, jasmine, pimento leaf, and the base notes, sandalwood, vetiver, and patchouli. And it is Lente de Rouge. It is a beautiful fragrance. I Great performance, great projection. I think it's very sexy date night perfume. I just prefer Lente de, the EDP, and I prefer the Lente de EDP Entente. 
The one in the black bottle that's got that sesame black pepper patchouli. And I love to wear that in the winter time. That one, my favorite flanker did not make the list. I always knew that the rouge flanker was very, very popular and I can see why. I just tend to like fragrances with weird notes and that's why I like the, the EDP Intense better. So that was the eighth spot. In spot number seven, I'm gonna be honest with you, I was surprised this made the list. I mean, it's a beautiful fragrance, but I didn't know it was so popular. And the fragrance in the number seven position to me is one of the best gateway vanillas around. It's a vanilla for people who don't like their vanillas to smell like food. And so here are the notes, see if you can guess it. We have kumquat and lime. Is that gonna give it away? So kumquat and lime in the top notes. Iris, violet, lilac, jasmine, lily of the valley in the mid. And for the base notes, we have vanilla, malt, ambrette, musk, sandalwood, and cedar. And so we have the beautiful Dama Bianca by Zerjoff. Again, one of the prettiest gateway vanillas in my opinion. If you're one of those that struggles with the note of vanilla and you do not like your fragrances to smell like food or a dessert, this is a very pretty one. It's very powdery, but it has that that fruity, citrusy freshness in the top. The powderiness, I'm sure, comes from iris. The ambrette in here is nice. The iris is slightly lips to keep it powdery at the same time. And it just has a really light and delicate vanilla that's not overwhelming. To me, this is on the, I would call this mild to moderate. It's not a huge projector. You're not gonna get a big scent bubble, but you're not going to offend or overwhelm people, in my opinion. So nicely done, Dama Bianca in spot seven. And in the number six spot is a perfume that took the fragrance world by storm, in my opinion, but also made a lot of people angry that it wasn't widely available. And I'm gonna tell you the notes, but you probably already know the fragrance I'm talking about. And I think if it was more accessible, particularly in the United States, this would have been way up the list. So the notes are, we've got black pepper, pink pepper, there's Elemy, there is frankincense, saffron, vanilla, suede and cedar and it is my beautiful baby cat oh my gosh this to me is really equal parts vanilla leather and incense saffron is very prominent and i think the saffron kind of just blends in with the leather accord and the opening of pepper is very nice and it just goes nicely with incense it just go straight into the incense. I pick up incense pretty quickly because peppery notes can smell like incense. So it gets, so the opening is peppery and incense-y to me. And I get that right away. It gets sweeter in the dry down. It has a nice, warm, ambery, vanillic sweetness in the dry down. And it shares that spotlight with leather, but vanilla comes out more on me. I sprayed it on my arm and then wore a coat a couple hours later, and that jacket still smelled like baby cat a couple days later. This is a great performer and I just know one of these days it's going to be available in the United States. I did buy Vanna Gloria to see if it was similar and there are a lot of differences in my opinion. If you want me to do a head-to-head -head or a side-by-side -side comparison of the two, I can do that. I have Vanna Gloria right over here but um, I'm happy to do that. There are similarities, but there are, in my opinion, some big differences. So Vanna Gloria is not a one-to-one -one dupe of Baby Cat. And if you have smelled this and really love it and can't get it, I got mine over at Selfridges, and if you can't get it, I would say don't buy Vanna Gloria blindly thinking you're going to get Baby, Baby Cat because in my opinion, particularly when you wear them side by side, which I did for seven days straight, <laughs> you will really pick up the differences. So baby cat in slot number six. In slot number five, I don't know why this was a big surprise, but there are a lot of votes for the one I'm holding in my hand. And it is a great fragrance to wear, especially this time of the year. That's really the only time I wear this fragrance because it is very, very sweet and sticky. And the top notes, we have cognac. Do you know what it is yet? <laughs> Middle notes, we have cinnamon tonka and oak. How about now? And in the base notes, we have praline, vanilla, and sandalwood, and it is Angel Share. A really beautiful cross. To me, this smells like a hybrid of a delicious boozy apple pie and a cinnamon bun all mixed together. Or maybe a cinnamon bun dunked in cognac, then coated with an apple pie. Again, it's very, very sweet, but it's so warm and cozy, and it is perfect 
for the cold months. I absolutely do not wear this in the spring or summer. I put it away. This was my New Year's fragrance last year. It might be my New Year's fragrance this year, but it's just too overwhelming and sticky sweet for me in the warmer months, but it's gorgeous right now. Maybe I'll wear it tomorrow and I can see why it made slot number five. So the fourth most popular or the fourth most loved fragrance, according to Instagram, is a fragrance that took kind of the fragrance world by storm a couple years ago. That's all you heard about was this fragrance. Once I start talking about the notes, you're gonna know right away. Top notes, we have lychee, rhubarb, bergamot, nutmeg. Mid notes, rose, peony, musk, petalia, that's a new one. Vanilla and the base notes, we have incense, cedar, and vetiver. And it was between Delina and some of the Delina flankers. Delina got the most votes, but the one I'm showing in my hand is Delina Exclusive. It is the flanker that I love to wear in the cold. This is my fall, winter, spring fragrance. I love to wear this in the winter and particularly the spring. It's still very cold here in the spring and this is perfect. You still have Delina minus a little bit of that green bitterness with a big dollop of vanilla ice cream, The there's oud in here. The oud in the exclusive one, I don't detect it in the air or in my sillage, but I do detect it if I kinda, you know, bury my nose on my arm where I sprayed it, then I can pick up the oud, then I can pick up a little bit of the incense. Mainly what I'm getting is the beautiful lychee, peony, rose, vanilla. Big time vanilla in here, and this one is a beast mode. I can literally smell this for 24 hours, particularly when I spray it in my hair. I love this one. Okay, we've got the top three. I'm not gonna lie. Number three and number two kind of surprised me. They didn't surprise me they made the top 10, but the fact there were so many votes for the third and the second slot kind of shocked me. So in the third spot, we have another fragrance that has a prominent note of lychee. So top note, lychee, cassis, mandarin orange, Peony, Water Lily, Jasmine, and in the base we have Ambroxan, Praline. Oh, I didn't know it had Praline. Vanilla, Musk, and Oak Moss. Can anyone guess what fragrance this is? And it is Greenwich Village by Bond Number no. 9. I, I absolutely can see why people love this. I absolutely adore this fragrance, and I think it's because you know, it has a similar vibe as Baccarat 540. They're not remotely the same. I would put this in a similar category, but it's much fresher. It has a lot more freshness. It's a little bit more playful. It's a little bit more, it's certainly less sweet. It doesn't have that sponge sugar sweetness or that cotton candy sweetness. It has delicious freshness. It's just a really pretty fruity floral. It is a fruity floral that I think would be very, very difficult to dislike. Interestingly enough, when I first got this, I could not smell it on myself and people around me couldn't smell it. And I know it's legit, I got it at Saks Fifth Avenue. However, now I have no problem with longevity, so longevity's great now. I don't wear it a ton right now. In fact, I haven't worn this probably in over a month because to me this is more of a spring, summertime fragrance, but I absolutely love and was surprised to know how many other people in the fragrance community, or at least those who responded to the Instagram poll, love as well. So Greenwich Village for number three. So the number two spot, I'm not gonna lie, this was the biggest surprise to me. I could not believe that this got the number two spot. I knew it was popular, I knew it was well loved, but this fragrance is really loved in the fragrance community over on Instagram. And I'm gonna read you the notes, see if you can guess it. You should be able to guess it pretty quickly if you're familiar with it. So we have cardamom, we have fig, black tea, iris, vetiver, sandalwood, and tonka. And it is the beautiful Gris Charnel. Gris Charnel is probably my very favorite fig fragrance and was the first perfume with a very prominent fig note that I actually love. I think this is the perfect combination of fig, cardamom, kind of a spicy black tea sandalwood. Those are the four notes that I get. Simply gorgeous. This is my go-to when the weather is is bad, like it's cold and rainy and I just want something comforting when I'm going to be at home, snuggling under a blanket, maybe on a weekend, doing a Netflix marathon, watching TV, reading a book, and sipping a nice chai latte. For me, performance is moderate. Some people may get less than stellar performance. 
for me it's not bad and I also spray on clothes because I usually wear this when it's cold, wet, and rainy. So number two spot really surprised me. Okay, in the number one position, a lot of you out there are probably guessing which one it is. And I will tell you, the one in the number one spot made the worst list too. So if you hate this fragrance, you will get your revenge in 10 worst fragrances of Instagram. Now, in the number one spot happens to be one of my very favorite fragrances of all time. I love this from the moment it came out. I'm on my second bottle and I'm halfway done with my second bottle. And I can be very finicky and fickle when it comes to my perfumes. And I, there's a part of me that I'm so glad I haven't gotten sick of it yet. It is the beautiful one and only Baccarat 540. I know half of you are like, ew, gross, I hate that fragrance. I did get some of that on, um, on some of the replies. Yes, people are like, I'm sorry, I don't like Baccarat 540. It gives me a headache. And my daughter, who basically loves everything I wear, this is the one perfume she doesn't like and it just breaks my heart. She just says it smells like a dentist's office. Curiously enough, she loves Ariane Grande Cloud. I bought her that for Christmas and she loves that. So that, that subtle difference between the two makes a huge difference for her and other people that pick up that kind of band-aid-y, that band-aid or dentist's office thing. I don't get it. I really don't get it in here. I just get that beautiful ambergris, sponge sugar, woody, deliciousness. And on me, Baccarat lasts all day, all day. Some people go anosmic, I don't. I have the lotion, I layered the lotion. I have a couple lotions that go really well with this. One from Bath and Body Works and, and a good friend of mine gave me the Baccarat 540 lotion and there, it just lasts forever and I love it. And that was it. The top 10 fragrances, the top 10 most loved fragrances according to Instagram. Tell me what you think, do you like this type of video? And if so, let me know if you want me to do more. And within a day or so, you will see the worst 10 according to Instagram. And if one of the fragrances didn't make the list and you think it should have, let me know in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of the list. Thanks for watching. If you like my content, I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel and give me a thumbs up. And with that, I'll see you in the next